when Cinema 4D introduced the MoGraph module in 2006. It filled a gap that most 3D software had ignored. So instead of focusing on simulation or rigging, MoGraph gave 3D artists a way to build animation systems visually, cloning objects, applying transformations, and leveraging effectors, all without writing expressions or touching scripting tools. Basically, it was made with motion design in mind, not for film pipelines or game development pipelines, and this intention shaped how it was used. You see, the tools themselves were simple in concept. You would start with a cloner, pick a distribution method, and then stack a few effectors to drive the motion. Randomize, step, delay, and each one of these altered the clones in different ways. You could control their influence with falloff fields, in addition to other things. It wasn't technical animation in the traditional sense, it was just design-driven movement. MoGraph became especially useful in commercial work. It fits into fast-paced production cycles for TV graphics, event packages, or branded content. And because the system didn't rely on complex rigs or heavy keyframing, artists could change things late in the process without breaking the setup. You could swap up the clone object, add an effector, or reshape the falloff, and everything would update non-destructively. And over time, MoGraph matured into a category-defining workflow. It blended procedural logic with directional control, which drew in a whole generation of artists from After Effects and 2D motion backgrounds. You didn't need an expert to make layered procedural animation, just a designer who could think in systems, which was just fantastic. And Maxon kept building on the concept. So in 2009, MoGraph 2 introduced dynamic bodies using the Bullet Engine, essentially adding physics to the MoGraph stack, and later, Features like polyfax, most spline, and Voronoi fracture gave more ways to break, distort, and reshape clones. Cinema 4D R20 brought in fields, letting users stack and blend fall of shapes the same way they would layer effects in compositing apps. And eventually, MoGraph tools also tied up to the scene node system in R25 and beyond, opening more procedural and data driven workflow while keeping the artist-friendly interface. In the last decade, you could find the MoGraph aesthetic everywhere you go, because it had become a visual signature of its own. Dense clone arrays, animated logos, cascading transitions, and beautiful animations. You can find it everywhere, from title sequences, and even in recent years, in Hollywood big-budget films, in animated maps or hologram effects, and even in the broadcast field. 3D motion designers using Cinema 4D have a high chance of being employed because this software has become integral in this field. At the same time, Houdini was heading in a different direction. It was known for simulations, explosions, fluids, particles, and for giving artists deep procedural control over geometry and effects. This power made it the go-to tool in film and VFX, but not for motion graphics. Technically, Houdini could do the same things, I mean, as MoGraph, you can build a cloner using copy to points, randomize transforms with wrangles, and layer animations with chops. But the workflow was complex, and the concepts were very abstract. Houdini actually expected users to understand data trees, attributes, and math, and MoGraph expected users to understand timing and composition. By the early 2010s, only a few users were trying to recreate MoGraph style setups inside Houdini. Ruan Dalvi's tutorials showed how to build cloners and effectors from nodes. These early efforts worked. Technically, Houdini could do the same things, I mean as MoGraph. You can build a cloner using copy to points, randomize transforms with wrangles, and layer animations with chops. But the workflow was complex, and the concepts were very abstract in Houdini, which is a lot. This steep learning curve made Houdini feel like it was designed for technical directors, not designers with tight deadlines. The power was there, but using it for motion work felt more like engineering than art direction. So side effects slowly started noticing this, and around 2015, they introduced Houdini Indie to make the software more accessible to freelancers and small studios. They also released Houdini Engine for Cinema 4D, which lets artists generate effects in Houdini and bring them into Cinema 4D. These moves hinted at growing overlap between the two ecosystems, 
but the workflows still fell worlds apart. Things shifted, however, in 2018, when Henry Foster and Morris Schwind released MOPS, short for Motion Operators. It was a toolkit built specifically to bring MoGraph-style workflows into Houdini. MOPS didn't change how Houdini worked, it sat on top of it. It exposed user-friendly parameters, sliders, and fields, while still using the core instance and system in addition to attributes under the hood. For example, a MOPS randomized node did what you would expect. It added random position, scale, and rotation with sliders, and a delay node offset animation timing across a point cloud. The logic was familiar to MoGraph users, but the control went deeper. Side effects supported MOPS early on, contributing code and promoting it on their website, and acknowledging that motion designers were a growing part of Houdini user base. The toolkit remained open source, and eventually grew into a commercial extension called MOPS Plus, adding advanced features like topography tools, field-based masking, and integration with simulation data. MOPS became the first motion designer layer in Houdini that truly felt usable without custom scripting. For many studios, this actually bridged the gap between Cinema 4D and Houdini, offering the procedural depth of Houdini but with the creative speed of MoGraph. By late 2019, Houdini 18 introduced a major update to its instancing workflow. The copy to point SOP now supports variant attributes through a new piece attribute system. Instead of using copy stamping, users could scatter different shapes across a point cloud just by assigning name attributes. This finally brought Houdini closer to MoGraph's multi-object cloning feature without the need for each loops or expression stamping. In Houdini 18.5, Sign effects added the attribute adjust SOPs, which streamlined common animation tasks like noise modulation, ramp based transformations, and spatial fall offs. These nodes replaced the need for VOP networks or hand authored wrangles in many use cases. With built in fall off support, they echoed the behavior from MoGraph effectors using fields, and they made Houdini much easier to use for procedural animation in design context. Side effects also added nodes like attribute from pieces to randomize instance variants across points and simplified curve based instancing workflows. While not explicitly branded as MoGraph features, the signs were clear. These tools solved the same problems that MoGraph solved more than 10 years ago, like how to animate many objects with layered procedural logic without writing code. If you look into it, you will see the similarities. As MoGraph gained traction, other 3D companies took action. In 2016, Autodesk integrated MASH, originally a third-party plugin that was later added to Maya as a core feature. MASH offered a similar toolkit of cloners, effectors, and falloffs tailored for motion design, and this marked a shift. Procedural animation aimed at designers was no longer a Cinema 4D exclusive. It was an expected feature set across all 3D software. Cinema 4D remained unmatched for rapid iteration and ease of use. Houdini took over when projects required scalability, simulation, or deeper procedural control. Some pipelines started in Cinema 4D and finished in Houdini. Motion artists like Simon Home Metal actually embodied this crossover. So after years in Cinema 4D, he turned to Houdini for control and efficiency. In one example, he described spending weeks building a morphing subdivision effect in Cinema 4D, only to rebuild it in Houdini with a fraction of the effort, because it required a lot of control and procedural effort. Today, studios commonly blend both tools. MoGraph's effort made that possible. It introduced a visual modular mindset that helped bridge art direction and procedural logic to a certain extent. So the gist of this is that what started as a niche feature set eventually shaped how an entire industry approached motion graphics. So MoGraph turned animation into a modular, design-driven process, and Houdini, through community tools such as MOPS and native updates from side effects, eventually adapted to that, providing another option and a different toolset for 3D motion designers. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.